Boom, here's what's new and improved with Motion version 4.3.3. This update adds a couple nice new features, uh, specifically for the stagger tool, which now works for different keyframes, as well as some nice backend features that you might not necessarily notice, but will make the whole motion experience even smoother. So let's jump into this update and see what we packed into it. If we jump on over to the stagger tool here, you're going to see that we've added some new parameters at the bottom, including the type, which you can switch from keyframe or layer. And we'll jump in and just do a quick refresher on all of the different controls and parameters and how they work with layers and then how they work, obviously, with keyframes, which is very similar. I've set up this composition in a classic Mount MoGraph example of some circles in the composition and a nice 15 second timeline so we can kind of work with these layers. Keeping all of these default parameters down at the bottom, I'll just click apply and you're going to see we instantly do get this nice stagger effect across all of the layers. I'll press command Z and we'll start working with the other parameters here and do a quick refresher on how they all work and what exactly they do. To do the best for the visualization, we'll go ahead and just scrub forward in time to wherever you want and do option forward bracket to just kind of trim the layers a little bit shorter, or you could also just like drag them back, but I'll do the nice keyboard shortcut because that's always nice. Now that we have these layers kind of trimmed, we can just go ahead and click apply and you're going to see that the layers actually jump to where the CTI is because that's what one of the parameters alignment is. If we do command Z and we switched our alignment to layer, that means even if we've scrubbed forward in the timeline and click apply, it's just because we're using the start index of the first layer. So just index is like the layer order in kind of the stack. Uh, we don't have to worry about the layers kind of jumping, but sometimes it's nice to have the alignment based on CTI. Let's go ahead and just take a look at what we've kind of done here with our random stagger effect. You can see that we get this kind of old like retro computer type, um, I don't even want to call it an animation, but a visualization, I guess, of, you know, the, the circles kind of being staggered in this very normal way. Command Z here, and since we're just going to go through these parameters kind of quick, uh, we'll turn on this continuous apply button. And that just means that whenever we change these parameters, they're going to be instantly affected in our timeline. A great way to kind of preview this is we'll go on over to the interval here and we'll just go ahead and kind of set this down to 10, for example. And now when we play our layers, we're going to see we're now getting a little bit of a faster effect. And since this is again, like a continuous application, I could even turn this down to zero, which obviously wouldn't be a stagger or maybe one frame if we want to have something a little bit quicker kind of happen. That's basically how the continuous up application works, which is a very fun um, kind of nice feature. And of course, you can also use the slider here to get all kinds of uh, interval differences. So interval is because we're in the mode for in point. If we switched our in point to out point, that basically means we're going to be using the out point of the layers to uh, kind of determine uh, how overlapped they are to the rest of the layers. If we go forward or backward in time, you can kind of see that we're now using the overlap um, based on the out point of the layers to determine what the stagger effect is. You know, in point and out point are kind of like however you want to think about what the stagger is. They can both be kind of helpful, but I'll switch this back to in point just because it's a little bit easier just for this uh, first kind of thing. You know, if we wanted a different direction, we could switch this to descending. And that just means that based off the, st the starting layer or the start index, which is the top layer, we're going to be going in a descending order. And obviously, if we want to go in an ascending order, that just means it's going the opposite directions. Again, this is based off the layer. If I switch this to CTI, it's always going to snap to the CTI. So I'll go back in time, click layer and then click CTI and it kind of snaps. And if I wanted to base it maybe off the last selected item, so circle 18, I'll just switch this to the bottom index and it's going to start ascending or descending off that index. In this example, I would switch this to descending and we're gonna get kind of the reverse effect of our first visualization. And we can go and change the interval as much as we want to kind of uh, stagger this effect. I forgot to switch this to uh, layer so we snap to the CTI so I'll just scrub back to the beginning here click the layer and then click CTI and then just switch it back to layer just so it stays where it is when I kind of preview this and you can see we're now getting this nice kind of reversed 
uh, stagger interval over our layers. And I can go and change this interval down a lot. Uh, maybe we'll just do a quick little uh, change down to six frames. And we'll get this nice preview effect. Very nice, a nice retro computer look. And then we can go ahead and start messing with like the grouping and randomization. Since it was a little bit easier to visualize, I'll switch this to actually the top index. So again, the first layer, uh, circle one on this layer stack instead of circle 18. And then when I go ahead and change the interval, it's going to actually be uh, off the first layer instead of the last layers. Since we switched the start index to the top, we're in a descending order and we want, want to actually go in an ascending order. So I'll do this and we can go ahead and do that trick again to click alignment off the CTI. We'll switch it to layer so we can scrub the timeline and not have our stuff move. And then go on over to the interval here and adjust as needed really easy or get crazy and do something with a slider that's just massive and you know kind of stupid in this example. But what's nice about these kind of digits here is you can quickly kind of increment the intervals very easily and you can also toggle to seconds if you like that visualization a little bit better. Um, I pr personally prefer to work with frames so I'll keep that as the control on this screen. Let's take a look at what grouping does. This basically just groups any of your selections into groups which you would probably assume with the name and we'll switch this to two and that just means we're now staggering in the groups of two. We can switch this to three to stagger in groups of three or four to stagger in groups of four if we had that many selections. What's cool with this is it again works with like the intervals to kind of stagger layers in bulk in this kind of interval stagger visualization. Really nice uh, kind of tool to be able to use and leverage for whatever your animation might be. I'll go ahead and close this and we'll switch our grouping. So I'll select the layers. We'll switch our grouping back down to maybe like two or I think one is probably the best just for this visualization. And we'll switch our interval back down to maybe 10 or 20. I guess I said 10, so I'll switch it to 10 just so we can uh, kind of see this a little bit easier play through. Now, of course, the last parameter to look at before we take a look at the graph and then take a look at keyframes is this parameter down at the bottom to randomize. So every time you click this, it's basically going to randomize the position. And this is kind of exclusive to CTI. It gets a little weird with layer because if it's always off the first layer, that layer wouldn't be randomized. So wherever your CTI is, you can just turn this on and off and it's always going to kind of like randomize the layers in that uh, interval. Uh, whatever it might be. So if I had the interval set to a lot lower to maybe like one or something, you can see we get the kind of like random interval effect. And yeah, you can have a lot of fun with this. So I'll turn randomize off. We'll just go back to the beginning again, click alignment to the CTI and then switch it back to layer. And then, yeah, we can just kind of creep this back up to something that we've been working with since the beginning. So in a nutshell, this is the interval kind of application for any of the stuff that you have selected in your composition. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. And of course, if we love this as our default parameters, you could click the little save button at the top. And yeah, that is like the interval parameters. And these work also for keyframes. It just is a little bit different with selecting properties, which we'll take a look at at the end of this video. I'll switch on over to graph here. And this is actually one of my favorite things to play with, with the stagger tool. Well, very similar to uh, the interval screen, you can click apply or turn on continuous application if that's what you prefer. And we will do that, but we have some other buttons in here as well. If you click reset, it just, uh, you know, you can read the tooltip here. It says reset graph to default values, which is nice uh, for a graph. There's a lot more kind of like variables you might be changing. So it's nice to be able to kind of have like a, a home base or a basic curve that you can always return to. Let's go ahead and just see you kind of what our default parameters are doing here. I'll click apply and you're going to see we actually get the curve that is set up in our graph. So if I change the curve, we'll just set up something different and click apply. We're gonna get that nice curve effect um, on our layers. I'll turn this duration. Duration means a little bit different in the graph. Uh, so I will turn this up to like, uh, you know, 80 frames, which you can see here is 2.67 seconds. And then when we click apply, we're just gonna get this nice stagger effect across all of our layers click apply again and uh, we'll take a look at what this 
staggered kind of curve looks and you're going to see this is very reminiscent to you know an ease curve or an animation you can see this middle portion going a little bit faster for this effect now that we kind of know this middle bar here i'll turn on continuous apply uh, just so we can kind of have fun playing with this visualization as we move these beziers, you can see that we can get this kind of live change to our stagger layers. And this is a pretty nice uh, feature to work with. And it gets very interesting because you can actually also move the uh, like top of the bezier to get kind of, you know, different kind of curves where the interval mode kind of works with, you know, more of an interval effect. You can do kind of, uh, yeah, unexpected or kind of interesting types of little visualizations and stagger effects with this graph mode and of course you can also click reset to kind of go back to you know home base and right now similar to what we were talking about with interval some of the parameters down at the bottom for alignment are being affected right now in this kind of continuous application every time we change this it's just snapping to the cti if we wanted to kind of keep these layers where they are at the beginning as we kind of scrub the timeline i'd go ahead and switch my alignment back to layer and that means you know whenever we play this effect after we want to preview it we're not going to get such a big change um or kind of snap forward of the layers so you know we can play around with this for a second we can also do stuff of dragging these uh top or bottom bezier handles or start of the bezier handles around and start really tweaking um, the timeline but this is a really fun way to work with the layers in your timeline to get stagger effects let's look at this swap button in the middle so when we click swap we're just doing kind of the inverse or reverse of whatever the graph is if you know you like the effect but you wanted to swap it you know that's what swap is doing for you Right now, since we're swapping off the top index here, we can go ahead and uh, do something a little bit different. Let's take a look. We'll do our duration type. Instead of being custom, we're gonna switch this to the work area. This means however large your work area is set is how kind of the graph stagger mode, I'm not sure how to actually describe this, but you can kind of see it's uh, staggering off the work area. If we go back in time and kind of set this work area a little bit smaller here, you were going to get that change. And every time you kind of reset your uh, work area, you're going to get the stagger effect to be reflected in the work area. So this is based off the endpoints of the layers. You know, we'll just go ahead and preview this uh, if we wanted that. That's pretty cool, um, you know, just kind of a more interactive way to work with the timeline. I'll switch the duration type back to custom and then we can of course work with custom durations again we can swap to seconds or frames based on what we want to be doing here and basically just have a good old time working with the graph and staggering our layers again you can switch your alignment to the cti you can switch your alignment to layer so if we wanted to snap back to the beginning you go cti and then click layer and of course this still has the grouping parameter if you wanted to get a little bit fancy here go through to the duration, kind of go forward in time, and we can kind of get this uh, nice interval effect. There we go, there is our graph kind of set up in our work area, or yeah, like our graph stagger kind of uh, style, which might look a little bit weird in this preview because the duration set so high, but it's pretty easy to just drag back to get what the, the preview might be looking like. And we'll just go ahead and take a quick look. And there we go, there's our little stagger effect. Uh, let's go ahead and kind of set this all back to the beginning. We'll just go ahead and snap these layers and let's take a look at the keyframe properties for staggering. So we'll go back to the interval screen and jump on in. First, let's go ahead and turn off this continuous apply button because we don't want to be doing this for every single change as we kind of start working with this. And we'll also go ahead and turn the grouping back down to one because just for keyframes, we're going to want to yeah, just have a easier visualization just to start and we won't go over all the parameters, but just kind of to go over how keyframes work. In order to work with keyframes, we probably need some keyframes. So I'll go ahead and add some keyframes onto position. I'll probably also need to add a uh, new column here um, and we'll go ahead and turn on modes just so we can kind of see the value. I'll just go ahead and uh, add a keyframe onto all of these uh, properties and we'll just do a slight little 
you know, just move move the keyframes down or something like that, and that'll be cool. So we'll also grab all these layers and just uh, drag them out just so they exist uh, in the whole timeline because we want to be working with the keyframes. And then let's go ahead and grab all of the keyframes in our timeline. So it's 18 layers of keyframes. We have to scroll up and down. I'm on a tiny little computer here. And we'll go ahead and switch our type now to keyframe. And if we click apply, we're going to see that the stagger effect that we're now familiar with is kind of working on all these layers so we can get this nice uh, easy stagger effect. And if we turn on continuous interval here, we can see that we can also do things of, you know, live changes across all these keyframes, you know, uh, to kind of take a take a look at like how to change this stagger effect until we get something that we like. And going through all these parameters, there's plenty of cool methods that you can kind of explore. So turn on things like grouping if you want to get uh, the grouping effect. You know, there you go. You can kind of see how this works. Maybe you wanted uh, groups of four instead across all these selections. There we go. We're getting that nice stagger effect. And then, of course, we can also go on over to the graph, which we just kind of went through and do all kinds of things. If we click apply or continuous application, uh, we can start doing any of the cool uh, weirdness that comes with the graph stagger and maybe even turn on our duration a little bit more um, and we'll go ahead and swap this and take a look at now what this does there you go um, this in a nutshell is all of the new stuff uh, I just went through all the parameters to kind of refresh it but all the parameters work with keyframes and uh, yeah I think this is a great little update to this tool it becomes a lot more useful and fun to work with and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Um, let us know in the comments if what you want in the next couple updates of motion and we're always working on it. So anyway, thanks for checking it out. Peace.